Hey, what's up guys? It, my name is Jason Abuso, and today I will be showing you the five main types of Frisbee throws. And make sure you stay to the end if you wanna see some cool specialty throws that are not included in the main five. But first you gotta stretch. Today, we're gonna to be using a disc craft Frisbee, which is standard regulation Frisbee in most Ultimate Frisbee leagues, including the AEDL, the college leagues, and high school leagues, and many more. The first throw I'm gonna show you today is the backhand. The backhand is the most common and standard throw in Ultimate Frisbee, and it's pretty simple. For the backhand, you hold the disc kind of like this. So you have your thumb on top and you have it, the three fingers underneath and then the last finger can be on the edge or slightly under, however it feels more, most comfortable to you. If you're just starting out, I would do this grip with your dominant hand. If you get really into ultimate frisbee as a sport, you might start practicing with your off hand, but just stick to your dominant for now. To actually throw the backhand, it's not coming from your whole arm. The motion is not coming from your entire arm, it's coming predominantly from your wrist. You could throw it just with your wrist without using the rest of your arm at all, which is a very important thing for most of the throws that you gotta be making sure that you're using your wrist, not your whole arm. So basically, you'd come back and then you flick it out with your wrist to get spin on it. So if I back up and show you, so the backhand, you want to um, for ultimate frisbee because you you would be assuming there's a defender in front of you. You'd be stepping this way and throwing it. A little bit closer up, you have the frisbee. You're bringing it to this side, curling your arm back and then flicking it out as you release it. So, The next throw I'm gonna show you today is the second most common throw in Ultimate Frisbee, which is the forehand, which is the opposite of the backhand, or as most people call it, the flick. To do the flick, it's a very different throw than the backhand. You grip it completely differently. So with the backhand, we gripped it like this. Now to do the flick, you're going to shift your entire hand so that you have your two fingers on the inner edge, thumb still on top. So instead of it being this way, where almost you're pointing at your target with your index finger, you're shifting it so that your thumb is pointing forward and the two fingers are underneath on the edge. The last two fingers are outside. So this throw more than any of the throws, it's really important that you're using your wrist because if you don't use your wrist, it will not spin properly. All right, to do the flick, you do the opposite of the backhand. The backhand, we stepped over ourselves. This one, we step out. So, like this. You wanna make sure you get a proper angle so it goes flat. All right, so see that a little closer up? You're stepping outward. So I'm right hand dominant, my left foot is my pivot foot. So I'm stepping with my right foot to the side, holding it like this, and going back with just my wrist, and then doing that. You're not using any of your upper arm, only a little bit of your forearm, mostly in your wrist. A way to practice that if you're having trouble is to hold your upper arm behind your back so you can't use it. So then you can just practice on just using your wrist. Same idea, just using your wrist. All right, the third throw we're gonna show you today is the push pass. It's not used very often because it's kind of risky if you don't do it right. But in certain situations at close distances, it can be useful. 
to the push pass, the grip is actually very similar to the backhand. So the backhand, three fingers under, index finger on the edge, thumb in front, and we would go back like this. The push pass, try to hold it the same way, especially with your index finger on the edge, but instead you push forward. And as you push forward, you roll it off your finger to give it spin. So I'll show you that. You just push forward and spin. Just push forward and spin. The next throw is a fun one, but I will say if you're just a beginner, I would hold off on practicing this one until you've really mastered the backhand and the flick. But once you're good at those ones, this can be very useful in very certain situations in an ultimate frisbee game. Uh, so yeah, this one is the hammer. The hammer you actually hold very similarly to a flick. So the backhand and the push pass were similarly held. The flick and the hammer are similarly held. So that means two fingers on the inner edge, thumb on top, two fingers on the outside. The way the hammer works is you throw it over your head. So you wanna throw it at like an, a 10 or 11 o'clock angle, uh, if you picture a regular clock, because your goal is to have it go out and curve into your target upside down. And that's why it's really fun because not a lot of throws are upside down like this. So basically, you would throw it above your head like that. I'll back up a little bit. Back up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Above your head, like that. And I'll just throw some the other way so you can see where they go. If you notice between those few throws, some of them can come in really hot and sharp if you don't throw it right. Um, but ideally it come in and kind of flatten out. So I'll go over there, throw some back and see if we can get it to flatten out in front of you guys. The next throw is called the scuba. The scuba is another upside down pass like the hammer. You actually hold it very similarly to the hammer. Two fingers under, thumb on top, last two fingers on the bottom. And instead of going up here, you're stepping this way, almost like how you step with the backhand, stepping across your body with your pivot foot set and flicking it like that. Something to know about the scuba is that it never gains height. So it'll only just kind of float downward the entire way unless somehow a uh, crazy wind catches it, which is different than most of the other throws where the hammer goes really high, flick, and backhand you can throw in an upward trajectory. This one, you can't really throw up. So basically, I'll back up the scuba. You step over your body. Show it from the other side. Cool. All upside down. All right, so those are the five main throws in Ultimate Frisbee. To recap, we had the backhand, we had the flick, we had the push pass, we had the hammer, and we had the scuba. Thank you so much for staying along this long. Now, since you've made it to this to the end of the video, you can see some cool specialty throws that definitely you know take some practice, but. They're cool. All right, first one is behind the back. So you hold it like this, thumb on top, four fingers underneath, but you hold it upside down so that you take it and go behind your back and you're spinning your arm, whipping it off your back to throw it upside down or throw it behind your back, I should say, like this. Next is through the legs. For this one, you hold it like a backhand, but you go back 
and between your legs. I'll show you that one. Take some practice, but it's definitely a cool thing to show off. All right, next is the chicken wing. You hold it with your thumb underneath, four fingers on top, and you kind of take your arm out and just whip it like this. All right, this next one, I do not recommend. Basically, I'm not even sure if it has a name. You hold it like this, thumb kind of going back towards you, fingers on top, and you flick it out like that. Some people on my high school team, um, a couple years ago, used to do that. But I will say, if you do that too much and too hard, you are very likely to really mess up the tendons in your wrist. But for the sake of the video, I'll show, you, show it to you. In terms of aiming it, it actually goes pretty well. But as I said, if you're not careful, that throw can injure your wrist, which for any ultimate Frisbee player, that's a death sentence. All right, next is the thumber. The thumber is the reverse of the hammer. So the hammer, if you remember, we threw at a 10 or 11 o'clock angle so it would go out and curve in. This, you hold with your thumb forward and then your other finger is just kind of, I have my index finger on top and then I have my middle finger on the edge. This one, you want to go the other way so that it curves from, um, for it's my right hand, so it goes from the right to left as opposed to the hammer, which is left to right. So let's see what we can do here. If you noticed, they kind of went right, left, right again. What that means is my angle was off, but you know, there's always room for improvement for ultimate Frisbee players and their skills and in their throws. So let's just say I'm still working on my thumber. The last throw I'm gonna show you today is the pull. The pull is very important in ultimate Frisbee. In football, we would call this the kickoff. Basically, at the beginning of each point, the kicking off team or the pulling team will have one player who will throw it, try to get pretty much the full length of the field if possible, or as far as they can without going out the back of the end zone. And kind of pretty much like a kickoff. Um, otherwise, it's basically a touchback if you go too far. But uh, it's not easy um, to go far, but in principle, you can get the hang of it for at least a distance. Um, something to keep in mind if you're interested in playing Ultimate Frisbee for your high school or your college or whatever, if you can throw the full length of the field, you will start 90% of the time because every team needs a puller and a good puller doesn't come by often. So, you know, go outside, try it out and uh, see how good you are at pulling, basically. You could pull with a flick. I always pull with the back end. Um, my method for pulling, I learned from a video I saw of Brody Smith. But um, my high school um, coach would always say that you don't need to do a run up because it's all really in your hips and stuff. Brody always did a run up, so that's kind of what I got used to. So basically, how it works is. Well, I'll step out here. So, you would do a run up. Do you see how I did that? I went up, stepped over with my right foot and back so I can get a lot of hip rotation into the throw. 
All right, so I'll throw a couple sideways so you can see the form of it, but then I'll throw a couple of far ones just to see how far it can go. The pull is the one throw in Ultimate Frisbee where you're allowed to move your pivot foot because you're kicking off. Every other throw, you have to keep a pivot foot down or else it's traveling. All right, I'll throw it this way so hopefully you can see how far the, the uh, pulls can go. One more. I could always work on my distance, but I think that was pretty good. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video provided you with some value. And if it did, I hope you consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Let me know if you play Ultimate Frisbee, you know, what level you play at, high school, college, maybe uh, middle school. I mean, some middle schools I've heard are getting teams now, which is amazing. I played Ultimate Frisbee all four years of high school, and now I'm um, playing in college. But hopefully this fall, get it right back up and running and have some real season games and stuff for the college league, which would be fantastic. But with that said, thank you again so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Peace.